Okay, wonderful. So I can see some familiar faces here. Okay, so before we start, um, just to introduce what we're doing today. Firstly, on behalf of um, uh, ISKCON, uh, the Bhaktivedanta to Manor, and of course, the educational department for the Manor Temple, which is School of Bhakti, uh, we'd like to give a warm welcome to everyone who's assembled here for today's special uh, webinar session, uh, which is going to be looking at the wonders of a beautiful scripture, ancient scripture called the Srimad Bhagat. And we're going to have two amazing speakers who are going to take us on a journey on what this uh, Srimad Bhagatam is about. Uh, before I start, obviously, um, my name is Nish Kinchana, so I'll be your MC for today. Um, I oversee a department at the Manor called School of Bhakti. So we deal with the courses, the events, um, retreats, uh, you know, like essentially the education for the Manor, because uh, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the Manor and may come here. Um, and as we know, uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of you are involved in various services, but a key part of the manner is the spiritual education that we give. Uh, and I would encourage all of you to take part in our education, our seminars, our events, our sessions, because uh, it will really nourish a lot of you in your spiritual journey. I'm also conscious a lot of you here are from Avanti schools, um, uh, which is wonderful. Uh, I know the schools are beautiful. I think many of us have had the opportunity to do assemblies there. And I'm, not, I'm sure there are students, I can see some young, young people here. So I guess you are the students. And I'm sure there are some uh, parents of the children as well. So some of you may already know about this uh, Krishna conscious culture. And for some of you, you're probably starting to find out what it's about, but welcome to all of you. Today's session is really just to kind of show you the spiritual foundation behind our Krishna conscious uh, schools, the culture that we are trying to develop, the message behind it, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so on that note, let's, uh, let's start then. So what we're gonna do, the first half of today's session, we're going to have um, a very special speaker and we can see um, this personality is already on screen, uh, on screen here. He is His Holiness Swam Bhagavan Keshab Swami Maharaj. So um, he's obviously a, a sannyasi, that's why he's known as a Swami. Um, it is the highest order one can attain in terms of uh, spiritual um, practice in one's spiritual journey. And um, in, the spirit, in a spiritual society, uh, it, it takes a lot of caliber and a lot of spiritual realization to, um, to practice on the level of a sannyas. Uh, Swam Bhagavan uh, Swami has actually been uh, part of the Bhaktivedanta Manor for well over 20 years. He joined um, as a brahmachari, which is a monk. And since that time, he has um, really spearheaded some of the major developments in the manor over the last 20 years, uh, developing the ashram itself, developing the um, education, the book distribution, the university outreach work that we do, um, as well as obviously uh, developing a lot of the manor departments over the years. Um, and of course, um, he has in, uh, in the last few weeks has decided to take on the role of a sannyas just so he can really um, expand his reach of how he can share this spiritual knowledge with society at large. So Maharaj will take us for the next 40 to 50 minutes, I like, well, let's say 40 minutes, um, on living spiritually through the Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, Maharaj himself would often say in the past that Bhagavad Gita is like the words of Krishna. And Srimad Bhagavatam is like the activities, the pastimes of Krishna. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna's instructions to us and how we can improve our lives. Well, Bhagavatam is one step further. Who is this person who's speaking the Gita? And what is he, you know, what is he like? What can we find out? How can we find out more about him? And how can that nourish us in our lives as well? Right? And this, so we get to know a lot about Krishna's pastimes and how it can actually relate to families here, children, um, uh, you know, couples. And is you know, the Bhagavatam actually encapsulates the deepest spiritual truths, but through wonderful incidents, adventures, pastimes that Krishna has had, as well as all sorts of other aspects of life and truths about life. So um, without further ado, I'm gonna hand over to Swayam Bhagavan Kesha Maharaj uh, to take us on this journey of how we can live spiritually through the words of the sacred scripture, Srimad Bhagavatam. 
Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. And once Swam uh, so Bhagavan Kesha Maharaj finishes, then we're going to go into our second speaker today, who is His Grace Vrindavan Chandra Prabhu, another great scholar on the Bhagavatam. Thank you, Maharaj. Over to you. Thank you so much, Ms. Kinjana Prabhu. Can you hear me okay? Okay, wonderful. So, hi, Krishna, everyone. For those of you on camera, give us a wave. So, I know you're there. Nice to see you all. And for, for those of you who can, it would be great to put your cameras on. I can see all these wonderful personalities. And nice to see so many kids on the call. Uh, Shreya, Mita with a big Jagannath there. And uh, Sham and Tulsi. Uh, amazing, wonderful to see you all. Um, yeah, so today we're going to speak a little about, about the Srimad Bhagavatam and why it's so important to all of us today um, to number one, have Srimad Bhagavatam in our house and then to also take the time to really read it and study it and what it can do for us. There's many, many books, 18 books, all of you have seen. And we're going to talk a little bit about why it's so important. But before we do that, we're just going to say some prayers. Um, so we get the blessings of uh, our teachers and um, of Krishna himself. Omagyan iti mirand hasigyan anjana shalakaya chakshodan militam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha nama om vishnupadaya krishna prashtaya bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya De Shatarine Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai All right, today I want to begin by asking all of you a question. And the question I'm going to ask you, I'm actually going to put it on the chat right here. And I want all of you to give me some of your ideas. If you look at the world, and the kids can also answer this, I know they haven't been in the world a long time, uh, at least in this body, but still the kids can also answer this. How do you think the world is becoming a worse place from now compared to like 10 years ago? What things have become worse from now compared to when your parents were kids? Uh, how has it become a worse place? Hari Leela agrees, but can you tell us why? How has the world become a less, a worse place? Shreya, wonderful. She says, everyone has become materialistic and are fighting, isn't it? Yeah, even the leaders are fighting. Even countries are fighting. Uh, Garima says, so much greed and selfishness. Yes. Um, did you know, I'll tell you an amazing statistic. Did you know that 95% of the wealth in the world is owned by 2% of the people? That's amazing, isn't it? Um, Jaggi says pollution, yeah, climate change. Saroj says greedy materialism. Vish says ego is a problem. Yeah, ego is really big, really pride. People are so, um, yeah, they have so much vanity. Um, uh, JSD and Vrinda say we have more technology, but our relationships are further apart, isn't it? Um, yeah, so many things. There's so many distractions. Vani says more intoxication in the world. Yeah. Um, family breakdown, Saroj, yes. So, so many things we see. The world has become a worse place. Um, now, let me ask you the question. How do you think the world has become, uh, Sham says, we're destroying nature. Yeah, so many trees are being cut down every day. Um, yeah. Now I want to ask you a more positive question. How do you think the world has become a better place? Yeah. 
has it become a better place? Can you give me some ideas on the chat? Avanti schools, yes, definitely. <laughs> uh, there's more spiritual knowledge because Srila Prabhupada came and spread all this knowledge across the world. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, ISKCON is there, yeah. Any other things? People are becoming more aware of natural disaster. Medicine has improved. Um, the manor is open again. We have technology, Umika says. Yeah, technology is good and technology can be used for good things. Um, we have more, Lolita says we're in a better place um, in our families and we respect. We have easier access to God. People are becoming more conscious about health and food. There's more interested in Eastern wisdom. Very good. We're here to spread the holy name. Yes, funny, very good. Um, so this is very interesting. Do you now see how in some ways the world has become better, but in some ways the world has become a worse place? Why do we want to give spiritual knowledge to the world? Because if we improve in our technology, if we improve in our knowledge of the world, if we improve in our economic situation, we can improve in so many ways. But if you don't simultaneously have spiritual knowledge alongside all of those improvements of the world, then those improvements of the world won't make people happy. You'll have more technology, but you'll still have more unhappy people. You'll have more money, but you'll still have people who inside of them feel empty. Um, society can advance in so many ways, but if we don't similarly promote spiritual advancement, then the world will become worse. I'm gonna ask you a question and you can again write your answers on the chat. If I asked you, what do you think were the three biggest problems in schools 100 years ago? What would you say? What do you think the biggest problems teachers had with students uh, 100 years ago? What, what do you think they were? <laughs> no Zoom, they've access, yeah. <laughs> they have Zoom. What do, you think, what do you think teachers had a problem with? Uh, any ideas? All of you are at school. Um, yeah, but in terms of the students, what, what did they have a problem in terms of the students? Uh, lack of classroom, lack of respect. Uh, children sometimes lie, yes. Uh, attendance, yes. They were naughty, too much speaking in class, eating in the class, yeah. I tell you the three main problems in schools 100 years ago in American schools. Number one, uh, coming late to class. Number two, cheating in exams. And number three, chewing gum under the desk. I hope none of you have done that, chewing gum under the desk. Yeah, these were the three biggest problems in schools 100 years ago in American schools. You know what the three biggest problems in American schools are now? Uh, kids at school carry guns. Did you know that? Sometimes they carry guns um, and there's a lot of violence. Do you know another problem is that teacher uh, kids sometimes attack the teachers? Not, not in our Avanti schools for sure, but uh, yeah, that's happening in schools in America. And, uh, and there are many, many other problems. So can you see how even though we've advanced, um, the world has not necessarily become a bigger place because we also, along with all of that advancement, we have to give spiritual knowledge. I'm going to share with you a poem which was written by an 11-year-old uh, girl. Um, how many of you are under 11? Those of you on the camera? Okay, some of you are under 11, yeah? Shall I, show, shall I read this poem to you? It's amazing. It was written by an 11-year-old girl. And do you know what she wrote? She said, we've conquered outer space, but we haven't conquered inner space. 
We lose our health to get wealth. But then later on, we spend that wealth to get our health back. She said, we have more conveniences, but less time. We have more degrees, but less common sense. We have more medicine, but less health. We've multiplied our possessions, but we've lost our values. We've cleaned up the air, but we've polluted our souls. We have higher incomes, but lower morals. The world is smaller and smaller, but people are further and further apart. We buy more, but we enjoy it less. We've added years to our life, but we haven't added life to the years in which we're here. Isn't that a good poem? Because it shows how, in one sense, people think we're really advancing in so many ways, but actually, we're not really advancing that much because there needs to be spiritual knowledge in the world. Um, I'm going to ask you a question. If you had a wall in which someone had spray painted some graffiti, and you wanted to make that wall look nice again, what would you do? Did you get the question? If there was a wall with graffiti and you wanted to make that wall look nice again, what would you do? Karima says paint it. Dakshish says paint it. Good. Anything else you would do? Hamo says clean it. Shreya says, clean it, paint it, paint it, paint it. See, break it and rebuild it. <laughs> That's quite harsh. Break a whole wall because it's got graffiti on it. That's interesting. Uh, Sham says, paint the color it had most of the graffiti in. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, yeah, we can do two things. If we want to sort out that wall, and make it look nice again, we can either clean it or we can paint it. And you know what? Sometimes when someone puts graffiti on a wall, even when you scrub it and scrub it and scrub it, it's not always easy to get all the paint off. Have you noticed? It always something remains. So actually, a better way to sort out the wall is to paint the wall. And so our teachers say that all of the children, all of you who are on this call, all of the children and all of the parents, you have your children. Actually, the real way to solve the problems of the world is that, you know, a lot of the problems that we have in the world today, we probably won't be able to solve them now in the here and now because they've gone too far. It's hard to just clean the wall now of all the problems of the world. But what we can do is create a better world for the future, paint a new world, create a, a new uh, backdrop for this world. In other words, uh, the children, the next generation, those who are growing up, those who are on this call and in 10, 20, 30 years time, you all will be the leaders of the world. Uh, you're the best hope for the world. Uh, there's better than trying to fix a problem from the past is to create a better future um, for the coming years. And actually, therefore, it said that all of you are the greatest hope. Um, and therefore, if the children have spiritual knowledge, if the children have spiritual values, if the children understand who am I, who is God, why am I here, why does this world exist? Or what kind of character should I have? If the children understand all of this, then it will actually create a better future for our world. And therefore, specifically, what we're trying to do with all of you 
is share the Srimad Bhagavatam, especially so that the children can um, understand it and can um, benefit from it and then can really make the world a better place because they have, uh, they're living that uh, knowledge that's contained within the Srimad Bhagavatam. By reading the Srimad Bhagavatam, we change our vision of life from material vision to spiritual vision. When you have material vision, then you're looking at how to exploit, exploit the world, exploit other people. But when you have spiritual vision, you're looking to serve, you're looking to uh, contribute, you're looking to nurture uh, other people, the world around you. When you have material vision, you're always thinking about what I can get, but when you have spiritual vision, you're thinking about what I can give. When you have material vision, then we're always thinking, how will I be able to enjoy? But when you have spiritual vision, you're always thinking, how will I be able to serve? When you have material vision, we're always thinking about the short term. But when we have spiritual vision, then we'll be able to look at the long term. When we have material vision, then we're looking at the world very selfishly. But when we have spiritual vision, then we're looking at the world very selflessly. And so do you see how if we, each of us individually develop spiritual vision, and if the next generation has more spiritual vision, can you immediately see how the world is going to become uh, an amazing place, a beautiful place? Um, because we change the vision of the world. We change the way in which uh, people see uh, everything around them. So the Srimad Bhagavatam is said to be like a torchlight. Um, when Krishna left this world, then the world went into darkness. But it said that the Srimad Bhagavatam is giving light, light to um, the world in a dark world. Can someone on the call write on the chat and tell me how many verses are there in the Srimad Bhagavatam? Um, who knows the answer to that? Yes, Shreya, thank you so much. Yes, there are 18,000 uh, verses in the Srimad Bhagavatam. And who knows how many chapters there are in the Srimad Bhagavatam? How are those 18,000 verses split up into chapters? Does anyone know? The Gita has 18 chapters that you know. Who knows how many chapters there are in Srimad Bhagavatam? Anyone want to have a guess? 332, 356, 330, 365, one for every day of the week. Um, yes, there's in the region is calculated differently, but in the region of 333, like that. I'll have to check myself, something, 330, something like that. Uh, very good. And uh, the Bhagavad Gita contains five main topics, the soul, material world, karma, time, and God. Does anyone know how many topics there are in the Srimad Bhagavatam? If there are five topics in the Gita, how many main topics are there in the Srimad Bhagavatam? Does anyone know? Uh, Aryan and Parth say 12, Kalindi and Shonak say six, Monica says six, Kadambri says 10, Hamo says 10, uh, Manish says 12, one topic for each canto. Yeah, there are ten, they're actually said to be 10 major topics in the Srimad Bhagavatam. In Sanskrit, it goes like this. Atra sargo visargascha stanam poshanamutaya manvantare shanukata nirodha muktira shrayaha. The first topic is universal creation. Um, and then the second topic is secondary creation. So two of the topics of the Srimad Bhagavatam are explaining how the material world came about. And then another topic that's given is uh, um, 
the planetary systems. Uh, another topic that's given is the care of Krishna, how Krishna cares for his devotee or nourishment. Another topic that's given is uh, the creative impetus or why things are, how this world develops and material desires that people have. Um, so like this, there are many, many different topics in the Srimad Bhagavatam. And uh, in this way, the Srimad Bhagavatam is helping us to understand many, many things about life. Uh, the Srimad Bhagavatam helps us to understand many things about theology. Yeah, in theology, there are three main questions to understand. Who am I? Who is God? What is my relationship with him? And how can I live in this world in order to establish my relationship with him? This is called theology. Yeah. So the Srimad Bhagavatam explains all about this. Who you are, who is God, your relationship with him, and how to live in this world to build that relationship with God. But Srimad Bhagavatam is not just a book of theology. Srimad Bhagavatam is a book of uh, culture. Srimad Bhagavatam also tells you how to live, what kind of character to have. If I asked you what are... What are good um, qualities that someone should have in their character? Can you tell me? Can you put on the uh, chat? What are good qualities that one should have in their character? Okay, to be truthful and honest. Yeah. To, be, to have empathy, to be humble, to be respectful, um, to be clean to be patient, compassionate, yes, to be kind. Now, I can name you a story which would teach you how to develop each one of these qualities. For example, how to be kind. In the eighth canto, there's a story of someone called Bali. And Bali, he was asked by a young Brahmin boy who was Krishna undercover, Vamandev. And Vamandev said, uh, I just want a small gift from you. Bali Maharaj said, I'll give anything you want. And that small boy, he said, I only want three steps of land. Because when you walk three steps, that's enough to lie down. He said, I just want three steps of land. Bali Maharaj said, yeah, I'll give you whatever you want. He was so kind. And with those three steps of land, Vamandev actually covered the whole universe. That's kindness, to give everything to someone else without holding back. Aryans and Parth say one of the qual good qualities is courage and kind, uh, to be courageous and brave. Who was courageous and brave in Srimad Bhagavatam? Can you think of someone? What do you think the most scariest thing in life could be? What do you think the most scary thing in life could be? Death. Yes. Death or kill our relatives, Prabhuji. Yes, either Arjun. the death of our relatives or the death Arjun. of ourselves. Yeah. yeah. So who who faced death? Parikshit found out, isn't it, that he was going to die in seven days. But he was so courageous. What did he do? He didn't cry. He didn't break down. He didn't... Um, curse Krishna, why are you doing this to me? He was very, very brave and he said, this is Krishna's plan and now I will just go and for seven days I'll hear Srimad Bhagavatam. So Srimad Bhagavatam teaches you how to be um, courageous, how to be kind. Um, Jagi says one of the qualities that we should develop is how to be uh, loyal. If I asked you, can you think of someone in the Srimad Bhagavatam who was really, really loyal? So much so, I'll give you a clue. It's a, it's a she. 
And what she did was that her husband had a weakness and she didn't want to be an advantage over her husband. So she voluntarily accepted to do something out of her loyalty to her husband. Can you think of who that was? Yes. Kusum and Vedant and Kalindi and Shonak and Harikanta say Gandhari. Yes, isn't it? Her husband, Dhritarashtra, he was blind. So when she married him, she said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to blindfold myself for the rest of my life. Have you ever played hide and seek and had to be blindfolded? Um, it's not so nice to be blindfolded. Imagine you had to be blindfolded for your whole life. That was Gandhari. But why did she do that? Because she was so loyal to her uh, husband. One of the other qualities that one of you mentioned, uh, Vani said another important quality is to be compassionate. So there was someone in the Srimad Bhagavatam who decided to drink uh, something very, very dangerous so that he would save the whole universe. Yeah, <laughs> you guys are quick today. Uh, Kalindi, Shonak, all of you are saying uh, Shiva, yes, isn't it? Shiva was so kind um, that he, um, he drank the poison that came out of the ocean so that the poison wouldn't uh, harm anyone else. And when he drank the poison, his neck changed color. And do you know what color it went? Does anyone know what color his neck went? Blue. Ooh, yes, therefore Shiva is known as Nilkant, the one who has a blue throat because he was holding the poison. So like this, yeah, all of you know these stories. And when you read these stories, then you'll, you'll understand how to become a really amazing person. So the Srimad Bhagavatam will teach you about God. The Srimad Bhagavatam will teach you about culture. The Srimad Bhagavatam will also teach you what to do in different life situations. For example, yesterday I was giving a talk and I was teaching conflict resolution, how to overcome arguments based on a pastime from the Srimad Bhagavatam at the beginning of the fourth canto, the uh, argument between Daksha and Shiva. So you can teach conflict resolution from Srimad Bhagavatam uh, and you can uh, learn about God, you can learn about culture, you can learn about so many things. So um, today we discussed a little bit about Srimad Bhagavatam and we have a few minutes. I don't know if anyone has any question they would like to ask about Srimad Bhagavatam or about anything we've talked about today. Uh, if you put your hand up, then uh, we'll give um, maybe one or two people an opportunity to ask a question, if you do have a question. Um, and then after this presentation, we are going to hear from Vrindavan Chandra Prabhu. Okay, so does anyone have a question? Uh, okay, Shaila Ja and then Nirmal. Yes, you can unmute yourself, uh, Shaila Ja. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, my Dandavat pronouns. Um, uh, my question is that there are vast examples in the Srimad Bhagavatam on what should be the level of devotion, um, say, starting from very small and to the uh, very elevated levels in order to reach back to the Lord. Um, you know, sometimes we hear that there is one person who has never done anything but just said only one Hare Krishna in the entire lifetime and he was carried back to Vaikuntha, and then he cannot come back because nobody comes back from Vaikuntha. Starting from there until the level of, uh, um, you know, uh, Jad Bharat, who has uh, practiced so much of sadhana in the, all the lifetime and then ended up falling down. So what is it in reality and how does it work for all the Madhya Madhikaris and just kind of a trying to chant and trying to be there, you know, for devotees like us, what, what would be the way? Yes, yes. Thank you. Very nice question. Well. Look at it like this. There are two very, very powerful things in this world. Uh, one very, very powerful thing is Maya. 
And another very, very powerful thing is Krishna. So what some stories of the Bhagavatam do is they show you the power of Maya. For example, Bharat was such an elevated devotee, but then Maya came in and had him become uh, attached to a deer. And just because of that small attachment, that small Maya, he fell down. So in this story, the Srimad Bhagavatam is telling you, be very, very careful. Maya is very, very strong. But then in the case of Ajamil, he did so many bad things. But then what did he say at the end of his life? Na, ra, ya, na. Four syllables. And immediately, although he had done so many things wrong, four Vishnu Dutas came for four syllables. That's a good deal. Uh, that shows the power of Krishna. So some stories of the Bhagavatam show us the power of Maya. And some stories of the Bhagavatam show us the power of Krishna. So now my question to you is, which one is true? Is Maya very powerful or is Krishna very powerful? And the answer is, both of them are true. And therefore, when we live our spiritual life, we have to live our life conscious of Maya or cautious of Maya and very conscious of Krishna. Both things are there. And, uh, and so different stories are just meant to teach us different things. And, what, and you're asking, what is the reality? The reality for us is that what we do is we follow the process that Srila Prabhupada gives us. And what Srila Prabhupada said was that if you chant 16 rounds, and if you follow the four principles, and if you serve the devotees, um, then he says, I guarantee you'll go back home, back to Godhead. So that's the standard that we follow. Hare Bol. All glories to Sri Dukta. Thank you very much. For that. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Okay, so Nirmal and then we have Shriya. Hare Krishna, Keshav Maharaj, Denver's Pranam. Thank you very much for the enlightening talk this evening. Looking forward to it and really appreciate your time. My question is, uh, we talk about Bhagavatam all the time and we try and speak to people. We know the importance of it. Uh, but how do you um, approach reading it on a regular basis? It's a gigantic scripture, 18,000 verses. And but just by looking at the books, you know, you just feel it's so onerous uh, and daunting. How do you approach that and uh, make it a regular habit uh, of reading it? And what is the best way to at least try having an overview or whatever uh, of Bhagavatam? Thank you. Thank you for such, such a nice question. Thank you. I'll share one statement with you, which I want all of you to think very deeply about. When we read a book, we're not trying to get through the book. We're trying for the book to get through to us. Okay? Can you remember that one? When you read a book, we're not trying to get through the book. We're trying for the book to get through to us. So sometimes we think that is success if we read the whole Bhagavatam. Sometimes we think it's a failure if we don't read the whole Bhagavatam. But the real success is actually if the message of Bhagavatam touches our hearts. And therefore, what we say to people, Nirmal, is that the first important thing is just try to read the Bhagavatam every day. One verse, one page, um, and try to deeply... Uh, before you open the Bhagavatam, make a prayer to Krishna and, and say to Krishna, Krishna, now I want to hear what you have to tell me today. And you know, when you read that one verse, and if you read it because you want Krishna to get through to you, then every page you'll feel, oh my God, this is so relevant to me. Um, and you'll want to read more and more. So my answer to you, Nirmal, is although the Bhagavatam is very long, just try to read every day and try to read with some attention. And there will be parts of the Bhagavatam which you won't understand, which will be difficult. That's okay. Just keep reading. Mm -hmm. And gradually, if you read 
consistently, you'll be surprised how much, how quickly you progress through the Bhagavatam. I think there's a formula that if you read 40 pages of the Bhagavatam every day, you can read it in a year. Now you may say that's too much. So then you can read 20 pages and then you can do it in two years. Or you can read 10 pages and you can do it in four years. But even if you did that, that's amazing. Um, but the main thing is you have to read every day. So just try to read every day and try to read with the help of others and try to read so that you want Krishna to speak to you. And then Krishna will speak to you through the Bhagavatam. Does that help? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That that is amazing what you said that you know you just uh, do a prayer before start reading Bhagavatam and say, yeah. tell me Krishna what you want to tell me. Uh, I want to understand what you're trying to tell me. And that is, I think, so changes the whole aspect of reading rather than you know just trying to, with your personal effort to read through it. You're just trying to depend on Krishna and say, okay, fine, I'll just try one page and please make me understand what you're trying to tell me. I think so. that is a very profound statement. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Yes, thank you. And Harikanta says the book is reading us. That's also another one. Very good. Yes, Krishna is also, when we read Bhagavatam, Krishna is also seeing our heart. Very good. Yes, uh, Shreya? Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Tanvi Hare Krishna. Krishna, nice to see you. Same here, Maharaj. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. Thank you very much for your time. Maharaj, I would like to know how can we influence our kids to read Srimad Bhagavatam daily, especially the first three cantos. I know when the story comes, they are all interested I, after fourth, uh, third, fourth cantos. But the first three cantos, how do we inspire them to read every day? Yeah. You know, sometimes what I would suggest is um, with children, you can also go to the parts of the Bhagavatam which they can immediately relate to first and let them develop uh, an attraction, an attachment, a connection with Bhagavatam. And then what will happen is that the other more philosophical parts, then they'll naturally, with time, they'll, they'll feel more uh, enthused to read those. You see, the beauty of Srila Prabhupada's Bhagavatam is that within all of the stories, Anyway, he's put all the philosophy. So even if you read only the stories of Bhagavatam, you mm. also won't miss out. So what you can also do is uh, just read the stories, the stories of Prahlad, the stories of Dhruva, the stories of um, Vamandev, the stories of Krishna. Um, I would say, yeah, let them find the natural attraction towards. Even today, I have my favorite parts of the Bhagavatam, and often they're not the most philosophical parts. So mm -hmm. we go. Prabhupada said Bhagavatam is like a sweet. If you eat it from this side or this side or this side, it's sweet everywhere. So, so yeah, I would say you don't need to be so strict with children. Let them uh, let them connect where they find they might you know some kids have a natural attraction towards a certain character or so let them let them develop that. Yeah. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Thank you. Good. Um, there are more questions on the chat. I'm I'm conscious of time, so um, perhaps we can have another session, or I can leave the, some of these questions to Vrindavan Chandra. I think for today, I will close. Uh, really happy to see all of you and uh, really hope to see you again soon. And uh, happy reading of Srimad Bhagavatam. Krantaraj, Srimad Bhagavatam, Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. His Holiness Swam Bhagavan Kishab Maharaj Ki. Jai. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for giving us a, a wonderful. Um, uh, yeah, wonderful discourse on, on the Bhagavatam and um, the need for it in this day and age for all, all people, um, young people and the older people. Um, and obviously, Maharaj, you know, gave us some wonderful examples of personalities and qualities we can emulate, um, such as Bali Maharaj, uh, Parishik Maharaj, Gandhari. And of course, there's some wonderful questions here. And Marge obviously gave us really nice tips on how we should read the Bhagavatam. Of course, today, I think Marge, uh, dare I say, has scratched the surface of what the Bhagavatam can give us. Uh, we're going to hear more about the Bhagavatam 
obviously we've got Vrindavan Chanda Prabhu coming up soon. Um, and, you know, Prabhuji has dedicated his whole life to obviously, um, you know, like giving himself to the Bhagavatam and sharing with others. Before we bring Vrindavan Chanda Prabhu on, I just want to also showcase, we have the main Bhagavatam scripture, which uh, Vrindavan Chanda Prabhu and Divyanam Prabhu, I'm sure he's here, will um, obviously um, share with you. Uh, on this seminar and, and who have basically made it their life and soul to give the actual scripture from School of Bhakti. Um, if you check us out, actually I'll put our website here. Um, yeah, www.schoolofbhakti.com. Please check out this website um, because over the year, over this the rest of this year, we're gonna be having some Bhagatam related special events, courses, seminars coming up. And we encourage all of you, whether you're new to spirituality or you've been practicing for a while, uh, to all of you to check those out. They're going to be really good. And also, if you can see on the screen here, this is a book that Swayam Bhagavan Gesha Maharaj actually um, uh, developed. It's called Book Bhagavad. It's really nice. It's got wonderful, like, um, you know, sort of tasks and boxes and, you know, work, worksheet type um, uh, displays inside with wonderful pictures that actually gives you a breakdown of the Bhagavatam with the stories and what lessons we can learn from them to apply in our lives. So I would recommend everyone to please check out uh, to, and to get this book called The Book Bhagavatam. It's a very good um, guide for your journey as you read the actual Bhagavatam, yeah? Okay, so on that note, time is ticking. Let's now move on to the next segment. Thank you very much again. Um, Kesha Swaran Bhagavan Kesha Marj obviously is uh, very busy, but took the time out. And as Marj mentioned, maybe we should be having a follow-up to this seminar very soon. And maybe, dare I say, do it live next time, not just on uh, on Zoom call. Um, but now I'm gonna introduce our next speaker, um, His Grace Vrindavan Chanda Prabhu. So Vrindavan Chanda Prabhu is a, an amazing devotee uh, of Krishna. He has been practicing for many years now. He's um, originally, if I'm, please correct me, but I believe from Hailing, originally from South Africa. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, from South Africa is obviously very professionally qualified. Prabhuji is a, a project manager by profession, but he's used managerial skills to actually develop a lot of wonderful projects and endeavors uh, to help develop the Krishna conscious movement. Not just in South Africa, but very much in the UK. Sorry, can we put himself on mute? Uh, just so we don't, uh, it doesn't uh, uh, come down. Um, and yeah, Vindavan Chandra Prabhu is not just a, an expert manager, um, he's also an expert scholar. Um, he gives wonderful classes, his knowledge, length of the breadth uh, and the, uh, of, of the scripture of Bhagavatam is incredible. He regularly gives morning classes, he's a mentor, he uh, guides people on their day-to-day -day lives and how to spiritualize their lives uh, when you're living in the world outside, uh, you know, bringing up your family, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So Vrindavan Chandra Prabhu today is going to speak um, more about how this Bhagavatam is relevant for families and children, what kind of value we can actually get from the Bhagavatam, and also um, give us an uh, update oh my God. on um, that's, what that's kind of events we can have. Devashish Ajay, sorry, I can hear you. Please put yourself on mute. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Sorry, Hare Krishna. Okay, without further ado, Vrindavan Chanda Prabhu, over to you. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, everyone, for giving us this opportunity uh, to be in your association and also to be part of today's event. I see gradually we're getting more and more people are leaving. Um, all right. But if you could stay for uh, about 10 minutes, uh, how much time have we got? Um, uh, you, you can go longer, you can go 20 minutes, Prabhuji. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll try. 20 minutes if you want to give some kata and some understanding, and, and if you want to also, uh, you know, um, promote up and coming ventures for the Bhagavatam, and then we can have another um, sort of five minutes for question answer and things like that. Okay, yeah. all right. So thank you very much, everyone, for coming to this event. Uh, I have a, a presentation. I'll share my slides and then we'll also we'll take questions and see. you can enable me to be host. Thank you. Yeah, you are co-host now, Prabhu. All right, thank you. 
So in the world of mobilization and um, the internet and in business, there is a common and well-known abbreviation. It's called CTA. Who knows what this abbreviation stands for? Anyone? No? It's quite a, a, a common abbreviation. Call to action. Call to action, yes. Call to action. I must confess I cheated because you, <laughs> before you put on full screen, I saw the ones on the side, so I should be honest. <laughs> All right, not to worry. Okay, I'll mute myself now. So, so CTA is, is, means call to action. Uh, so what is the call to action uh, we're going to speak about today? It's a very important one. Actually, it's, it's such an important one that our Acharya Srila Prabhupada dedicated his life to this call of action. He made this his main project in life. He sacrificed his health and well-being for this particular project. So what is the call to action? So that call to action is related to a worldwide campaign taking place at the moment. It's the campaign for consciousness change. Now, somehow the other in this Kali Yuga, it seems that our memories are very short. We tend to, 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 to forget even relatively significant events quite quickly. But if we just take a step back you know, something like 18 months ago or more, where the world went into lockdown. Uh, that was something we, we never experienced. Uh, and it's probably something we never experienced again in our lifetimes. Who would have thought that the roads of the world would be empty? The offices and the cities of the world were quiet. No one ever imagine such a thing happening and i can remember during the lockdown you know people were saying how nature is started to re-establish herself the birds started to come out and you know living entities that were afraid and hidden started to appear and there's things in the oceans and at that point in time everyone started to say we need to take stock we are moving very quickly in the wrong direction. We need to take stock and we need to do something differently. Otherwise, we're heading very quickly towards a really frightening situation. And I'm not sure if you can remember those times or those days. Everyone was thinking and the newspapers and the news were all saying, and actually it's a fact. You know, there was a, a great realization that nature was giving us a, a wake up call. And people were thinking, what is that wake up call? What do we need to change? And there was a realization that in this world, we needed a consciousness shift. To save our planet from disaster, we needed a consciousness shift. But nobody really could put their finger onto what is the consciousness shift? Well, actually they had some idea we needed to move away from exploitation, controlling, right? and to you know, move to a different way of thinking and living. But no one really has a clue about how we achieve that. So I wanna talk briefly about this very, very important because every one of us on this call today has a very, very important part to play. We are currently establishing a worldwide campaign. And this worldwide campaign is called Save Earth Now. And below that it is written, Give Srimad Bhagavatam. And there's a campaign to distribute Srimad Bhagavatam like we never did before. 43,000 sets of Srimad Bhagavatam around the world. Now, if someone, you know, reads this, they'll say, I, I'm sorry, but I just can't make the link. Save Earth now. Give Srimad Bhagavatam. You know, what is the link? And, and to, to really understand what this link is, we've got to step back 5,000 years ago. 
Who knows what this picture here is portraying? Who can tell me what this picture here is portraying? Um, can yes. you wake me up at early? Yeah, right. To have a shower. Sorry, I missed that. I need to get to bed then. So you just let me show you. Wake up, I'll get angry. Oh, come on, I'm unmuted. Who knows what's in this picture here and what's happening in this picture? Tell me, please. It's the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam where all the sages get together to see, to foresee what is coming in the age of Kali, where they say that uh, the longevity of the people and the memory of the people reduces and they're not, they're very ignorant. They're not aware of themselves, neither the Supreme. So what can we all do for the good of the upcoming uh, uh, um, you know, people in the Kali Yuga and what can we leave uh, in terms of the knowledge and the scripture for, for their good overall in the Kali Yuga. Okay, thank you very much. Andri, you want to, you raised your hand, you wanted to say something? Someone raised their hand. Yes, it's Andri. Oh, you put it down now. Anyway, so 5,000 years ago, 88 thousand of the greatest thinkers of the world got together. Can you imagine that? 88,000 of the greatest thinkers of the time coming together. And they came together for a very specific purpose. And what was the purpose? These great sages, these great thinkers, they had the vision, they had the ability to see what was coming in Kali Yuga. And they could see war was taking place in Kali Yuga and it was frightening and it was distressing and for the saints and sages whose hearts are full of compassion to see something like that that level of suffering uh, the automatic thing they do is uh, how can we stop that suffering so they got together and they said all right we need to do something now to try to push back the suffering that's going to come in Kali Yuga. And they had a discussion among themselves and finally they came to a conclusion. Who knows what was that conclusion they came to? What could they do to hold back Kali Yuga? Anyone? Anyone knows what was the conclusion they came to? Okay, I'm going to tell you. They said, let's do one big fire sacrifice. Let's do it for 1,000 years. Let's chant the mantras from the Vedas. And that's going to create a very powerful energy that's going to push back Kali Yuga. And they got very excited about this decision. Made a big kund started this fire and for 100 years they were pouring ghee in the fire and they were chanting mantras and they were chanting swaha but after 100 years all of them had this this feeling this intuition this is not going to do it and when they came to that realization that the only thing that was happening, their face was where they come black from the suit. They said, they felt completely despondent. They felt completely despondent thinking, we, we can't do it. I don't think we can help these people. They just have to suffer. And as they were thinking like that, something really happened that lifted them up, made them full of enthusiasm, ran. Who knows what happened that raised their, raised their enthusiasm, raised them from the sense of despondency, gave them hope. Who knows what happened at that time to these 88,000 great thinkers? Come on, help me. This is such an important thing, it's so relevant. Okay, I'm going to tell you. They saw this effulgent, great Rishi, this great sage, the son of Roma Harshana Sutta, Sutta Goswami coming. And they all run up to Sutta Goswami, they offer their obeisances, 
And Suta says, what's going on? You look like you're desperate. You, you look like I am some source of hope. And then the sages related to him, what has just happened and what was their condition? And then Sutta Goswami said, you don't worry. I have the exact answer and the exact solution that you're looking for. And there was pandemonium, there was excitement and there was talking. And then Sutta Goswami said, okay, and they decided among themselves, they will form a group, one spokesperson, and then they will ask Sutta Goswami six questions. But to cut a wrong story short, Sutta Goswami told him that I have just come from the assembly where for seven days and seven nights, Srimad Bhagavatam was spoken by Shukadev Goswami to Maharaj Parikshit. And that is the solution for the age of Kali. Now, that raises another question, how? Right. So that question is, if we have to trace the root cause of all the problems in the world, the cause for climate change, the cause for the war in the Ukraine, the cause for all of the financial problems we're having now, the cause of the social problems we have, the source of all of the health problems, if we are to trace it down to a singular one cause, one root cause, what would that be? That's a really big question, I have to admit. It's a huge cause to find a singular root cause for all of the root of all the problems in the world. That is not an easy answer to find to. But Sutta Goswami, he hit it, the nail right on the head. He said the root cause of all the problems in the world is the condition of people's hearts. Hearts that have been covered over by greed, by lust, by anger, by envy, by ambition. Just like if you look at the problem, the war in the Ukraine. What is the cause of the law, this, this war? It is the condition of Vladimir Putin's heart. Vladimir Putin who wants to see more control, a bigger empire. If you want to trace the cause of the climate change, what is the cause for ultimate cause for climate change? It's people who want to, to tear down our forests, build factories, industries, make money. The root cause of all the problems in the world is the condition of people's hearts. So that raises another question then. How do you cleanse people's hearts? If we go out for school or for work, working in the garden, we come back, our bodies are dirty. We go under the shower, we open the tap, we put soap on our body, we cleanse our body. But if we want to cleanse the heart, how do you cleanse the heart? What is the most effective, the most potent, the, the best way we can cleanse the heart? Please tell me. By remembering the, the Lord remembering the and Lord. chanting his holy names. Uh huh. Chanting the heart. Someone says, Chanting, showing moral values. Yes, go on. Prayers, Shreya, yes. Anyone else? How do you change, cleanse the heart? Srimad Bhagavatam says it. Shrinvata Swakatam Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Ridayantastohu Bhadrani Vidunoti Suritsakam. That 
the way to cleanse the heart is to constantly hear about the name, fame, the glories of Lord Krishna huh? and his great devotees. And what happens when one does that? Bhagavatam says, Shinvatam Swakatam Krishna. At that point in time, when Krishna sees we have an affinity to hear about his glories, he personally enters within the heart and cleanses the heart all the unwanted things. That's how the world is going to change. That is how the consciousness shift in the world is going to take place. Now, that is why Srila Vyasadeva wanted the Bhagavatam to be spread. That is why the 88,000 sages wanted to be spread. That is why the great Acharyas of the world, Madhvacharya, Ramanujacharya, Valabacharya, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they all said one thing, spread the glory of message of Srimad Bhagavatam. This was so important, so fundamentally important. In the Bhagavatam it says, Krishna Svadhamo Pagate Dharma Yenadidi Saha Kalao Nasta Drishamesha Puranar Kodinoditaha That this Bhagavat Purana is as brilliant as the sun. And it has arisen just after the departure of Lord Krishna to his own abode, accompanied by religion, knowledge, etc. Persons who have lost their vision due to the dense darkness of ignorance in the age of Kali shall get light from this Purana. How will this happen? Persons who have lost their vision due to the dense darkness of the ignorance of the age of Kali shall get light from this Purana. Actually, this Bhagavatam is so so great that in the Skanda Purana, Lord Krishna in chapter 16, he speaks verse after verse after verse after verse to Lord Brahma, explaining all the glories, all the benefits, you know, all the purification that will come to those people that keep Bhagavatam in their home, who read Bhagavatam. I'm not sure if all of you have seen this document, but you should if you haven't. And I'm happy to share this with you if you can email me, Vrindavanchandra at KrishnaTemple.com. I'll share this with you. This was so important that Srila Prabhupada sacrificed his health, sleeping only two hours from 10 o'clock to midnight. And Srila Prabhupada said, I want that every respectable person has a full set of Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Chari can be coming at home. So Bhagavatam, you can read these from verses from chapter 2, uh, verses uh, 16 to 22 of how Bhagavatam will change the world. So what can you do? How can you become part of this consciousness change? Prabhupada said he wanted mass distribution, every home. So firstly, all of us on this call, we have a home. Many of you all are so, your names and I saw your faces. I know many of you all, you already have Bhagavatam. But those who do not have Bhagavatam, you please take it. You take this Bhagavatam and you keep it in your home and then immediately it will bring all auspiciousness. If you already have Bhagavatam, then you gift someone a set of Bhagavatam. Someone who's dear to your heart you give them a set of Bhagavatam. If you're not sure who to gift it to, you sponsor one set or you part sponsor the set and we will place it on your behalf. And then if you do not feel you have the means to even give a little bit towards sponsoring a set, then Prabhupada says we have three faculties. Yeah? We have our time, we have our wealth and resources, and we have our life. At least give some time towards distributing Bhagavatam. This is the call to action, dear devotees. And every devotee or every person who considers himself a devotee of Lord Krishna should do this. Srila Prabhupada said in one lecture in 1971, Prabhupada asked the question, what is the main symptom of love? What is the prime symptom 
What is the most important symptom of love? Prabhupada asked this question. And does anyone know? What was the answer the Prabhupada gave? The Prabhupada said, the prime symptom, the main symptom, the most important symptom of love is that the devotee wants to see the glories of his Lord spread far and wide. And Prabhupada quoted this verse from Bhagavad Gita. No one is as dear to me as one who preaches this message of Krishna consciousness, which Lord Krishna says in the 18th chapter. So dear devotees, we are trying to distribute 43,000 sets of Srimad Bhagavatam in the world by the 10th of September. That's Bhadra Punima, the night of Bhadra, where it said in the Bhagavatam, the 12th canto, 13th chapter, 13th verse, if on the full moon night, full moon day of Bhadra Punima, if one places on a golden throne and gifts a set of Bhagavatam, then one will attain the transcendental destination in the next life. Who doesn't want it? It's the, it's the consciousness of people, especially in Kali Yuga. We want a big return for a small investment. Uh, we want to put $10 or 10 pounds, and we want to get a million pounds. That's why people take the lottery so much. They want a big return. So there's no bigger return for a small investment than gifting a Bhagavatam on the night of Bhadra Punima. This is what Bhagavatam does. So this is our, our appeal to everyone. Please, dear devotees, our small contribution from Bhakti Vedanta Manor is 600 sets. So far, we've only distributed 50 sets. We've got another 550 sets to distribute. If at least every member of our community, we've got over 10,000 members in our community, even if a few members say, I will take this up, I will take up this call to action, I will take or distribute or sponsor or part sponsor or gift. It's a very important mission. And anyone who takes part of this mission becomes very dear to Srila Prabhupada, very dear to Lord Krishna. So I'll stop here. I'll take any questions you may have about anything I said or anything I may have not said that you may want to know about. And um, yeah, I'll stop the presentation. Any questions? Oh, we've only got 32 people now. Most, more than half of the people have run away. They're not very keen to take up this particular part of the mission, call to action. Anyway. We experience this a lot. Um, anyway, yeah, we experience this a lot. But please, who, those of y'all who are still on the call, I thank you. Thank you for hearing us out. And I beg you, um, Shila Prabhupada has established this mission. We have a big, big duty, a big mission. We should partake of it. And when we do, all glories comes into our life, all auspicious things. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Anyone who doesn't have Srimad Bhagavatam, you can uh, quickly go to this uh, link. It's a very simple link, www.krishnatemple.com backslash bhadra. And if you uh, want to contact me about anything, want to know a bit more, uh, my email address is vrindavanchandra at krishnatemple.com. All right, I'll stop here. Finally. Any questions or comments from anyone? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Wonderful to see you. Thank you. Um, the manner they go on a regular outings for book distribution. Yes. What day is this? Well, we have one set day once a month called the Monthly Sankirtan Festival. Then we're, now we're currently in the Summer Book Marathon. Uh, devotees are, are 
going in little groups either by themselves every day. They're going out every day. So if you want to connect with any particular group, just let us know and, and we can let you know which group you can join. Hmm. I, I have tried Prabhu um, through the East London Bhakti Vriks, but I was pretty useless at distribution. <laughs> I don't think Krishna would think you are useless. Even an effort, no matter if there's no results, if the effort is put in, that is seen by, by, by Lord Krishna, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Srila Prabhupada, and all of the Acharyas. So that is a success. Whether you distribute or you don't, simply the effort of trying is, is sufficient. It's a success. It's Thank you for your kind words. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Anyone got any other questions or comments? Who is, who feels like they'd like to be part of this worldwide campaign to do good for the world? Hare Krishna. So I saw two hands go up. Anyone else? Please put your name in the chat box. In the chat box. If you want to be part of this mission to change the world. Oh, great. Fantastic. Seeing so many names come through. Dilip, um, Jeruman, Sailajya, Hare Krishna. Oh, thank you so much. So, um, be the devotees, we need to. We've got some really good events coming up. Uh, we've got a fantastic speaker. One of the foremost speakers in our entire society is Grace Radhika Raman Prabhu. He's going to be doing a three-day Bhagavad Kata, speaking from how Bhagavad, Bhagavatam shows this most important quality of forgiveness and the glories of Bhagavatam. Sixth, seventh, eighth of August. Put that in your diary. And then um, Swayam Bhagavan Keshav Maharaj is going to um, do a roadshow, a seven-day roadshow going to different venues presenting Bhagavatam. We have a book table uh, every Saturdays and Sundays at the temple. It's so exciting. You come and you teach the people about, speak to speak people about Srimad Bhagavatam. We go door to door. We're going on the streets. There's just so much have happened. So many people have happened. Just, just develop this desire. Prabhupada says, simply if you think how to do. Simply by thinking how to do, how to do, how to do. Even if you do not do. Simply by thinking how to do, you become liberated. How amazing is that? All right. Any more questions or comments from anyone? I can see gradually more and more people are leaving. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. I have one question. Uh, yes. Apologies. Uh, I regret this not particularly related to the book distribution, but uh, um, something uh, besides that. Is that okay to ask? Yeah, go on. Thank you. Uh, Prabhuji, so when you said earlier in a couple of the lectures that uh, you know when a devotee gets liberated, uh, 21 generations of him, um, you know, before and after him are also liberated. So just wondering what in case, I mean, uh, mostly they are not the devotees and um, how does the liberation happen and what do they do after going to, uh, going back to the Godhead because they have not yet developed the Krishna Prema. Uh, how does it? Well, we can see that benediction in different ways. Uh, some uh, acharyas and great uh, devotees have said they will, get the opportunity for devotional service. Now we know that the opportunity for devotional service is the greatest form of liberation anyone can perceive. So largely it is, it is deemed that these people by dint of being connected through 21 generations to this great Vaishnav, they will get the opportunity from, for devotional service and through that opportunity, they'll perfect their lives and get liberated. Okay, so it's not an immediate uh, reflection, but a gradual process. Well, there are some acharyas say, no, you can take literally. They will be liberated because bhakti is so powerful. Okay, so when they're liberated, are they kind of restored back to their original position of, you know, having... There, there is five types of liberation. Yeah. You know, 
one type of liberation is to merge into impersonal Brahman, like, like Shishupal. Uh, he was so envious of Lord Krishna, although he was in, so envious, uh, he got liberation, but that liberation was merging into the impersonal Brahmachyoti. So it is, you can look at it from different angles. Okay, all right. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Hare Krishna. Krishna. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Thank you very much for giving us your time and your attention today. We do really look forward to each of you coming forward and taking up this very, very, very important mission. Now, taking it up means first in your own life, in your own families, and then secondly, distributing. But they say charity starts at home. So you can start off with your own family. Get Bhagavatam, read Bhagavatam, share Bhagavatam. Hare Krishna. All glory to the Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. He's, if everyone can please give a, a big Hare Bull for His Grace Vrindavan Chandra Prabhu. Hare Bull. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Wonderful. Thank you, uh, Vrindavan Chandra Prabhu, for a wonderful discourse. And I think what Prabhu has shown is following on from Swam Bhagavan Kesha Marj. Marj gave us the need for Bhagatam and how it can help us in our journey. But Vrindavan Prabhu is also bringing us to the, the level where it's not just about our own nourishment, but how we can actually share this Bhagatam and elevate the consciousness, not just of ourselves, but the entire planet by taking up this mission of actually giving Bhagatam to each and every one out there. So um, obviously Prabhuji has given details there of how we can get involved in this mission. And this mission is something that the whole MANA uh, community is behind them. Um, in fact, obviously, you know, even from School of Bhakti side, we partake in this monthly Sankirtan uh, festival. We have a representative there, Diru Mataji, um, and of course, a few other devotees. If you want to get connected with the monthly Sankirtan, actually, you know what? Let me put our website as well. You've got the Krishna Temple one. On schoolofbhakti.com, you can also, we can connect you to Gomatsya team. We're, we've got the link to forward you onto Gomatsya, which is Vrindavan Prabhu here. Um, and if you want to get involved in monthly Sangitan, you can obviously let us know as well, whether it's through Krishna Temple or School of Bhakti. And just remind you of a few save the dates. So uh, it, uh, for the rest of the year, there's going to be some Bhagatam related events going on. As Prabhuji mentioned, 6th, 7th and 8th of August, we will be sending out a promotion on this um, by Krishna's grace by tomorrow. Okay. Um, so there'll be flyers, promotions going on on the WhatsApps, our website here, et cetera, et cetera. Actually, if I may, even before that, there's going to be also a special guest coming on the 29th of July, which is end of this month, actually, on the Friday, which I'll put it as well, called Raj Bihari Prabhu. He's also a great scholar uh, on Bhagatam and Krishna consciousness. He's going to be doing an event at the Mana Temple Room right, in the Manor Temple School of Bhakti event, in the Manor Temple room, free, of course, donation help. Um, so please come for that. That's at 6 p.m. Friday evening. So you can come straight after work. And this is going to be uh, here. Friday, 29th July, 6 p.m. in the Manor Temple room with Raj Bihari Prabhu. So it'll be a wonderful nectarian um, evening where Prabhuji will give us a lot of wisdom and a lot of, um, you know, stories and most likely they'll be from the Bhagavatam because the topic is on, on Krishna Gatha actually. So um, there you go, 29th of July, save that date, Mana Temple Room, and then as Prabhuji mentioned, 6th, 7th, and 8th of August, there'll be um, again another wonderful event um, with Radhika Raman Prabhu, and this will also be at the Mana, most likely in the Havadi. Um, probably is one thing I forgot to mention, very important thing, is that whoever takes Bhagavatam during this Bhagavad campaign, they will get the free, the adults will get the free course of the first six cantos to the School of Bhakti, and all children will also get a, a, a special course to the School of Bhakti. That's a big benefit. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, we'll keep you posted. We're going to be doing a Bhagavad life course this year for... Um, maybe the parents, adults, and for children, we're going to be doing some Bhagavatam courses. 
So yeah, please uh, take advantage of this opportunity. So let's start with the Friday 29th. Come for that, enjoy yourselves. And then 6th, 7th, 8th August, come for that, enjoy yourselves, and then take up the mission. <laughs> okay, so I think we can... Um, Agent for today, Vindavan Prabhu, if that's okay. Yes, 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 yes. It's, it's past uh, eight o'clock. I think everyone was really feeling hungry, maybe, if you haven't had dinner yet. Sure, sure. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful you. evening. Thank you very much. And Hare Krishna. we can all say, Grantarat Srimad Bhagatam Ki. Yeah. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Krishna